Welcome to Divine Mercy Matters. In this episode, we will cover the image of Divine Mercy, as explained by different experts from the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception and some of our partners in this important ministry. As official promoters of the Divine Mercy message since 1941, we are pleased to offer you these teachings to help you grow in your faith. Now let us begin. Father Seraphim Mikolenko is a member of the Congregation of Marians of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. He is a leading authority on the life of Sister Faustina and on the messages given to her by our Lord. Father shares his insight. Sister Faustina never held a position of importance in the convent, and she was given some of the most menial tasks to perform. Yet Christ chose her to be the secretary of his message and the apostle of his mercy. Her mission was to make humankind conscious of the fact that God is merciful. He is love itself poured out for us, and he wants no one to escape that merciful love. Through her many mystical experiences and revelations, the Lord commanded her to have an image of himself painted. When he told her to paint that image, he promised that souls that would venerate it would not perish. They would have victory over their enemies already here on earth, and especially at the hour of death. He even said that he would defend them as his own glory. The specific characteristic of the image Sister Faustina was ordered to paint, and which is to be given deep religious respect throughout the world, especially on the first Sunday that follows Easter, are the red and pale rays that stream forth upon the viewer from beneath his robe slightly drawn aside at the area of the heart. The significance of these rays can be seen in various scriptural references, and according to our Savior's own explanation, these rays represent the blood and water that flowed from his side, pierced by the soldier's spear. This is the supreme representation of God pouring himself out as love and mercy for our spiritual benefit. The powerful thing about the image of divine mercy is you notice that when most people talk about apparitions or you know Mary coming or Jesus coming nobody else sees it the children of Fatima you know when Mary appeared to them did anybody else see it uh-uh. just the children in divine mercy there was a light from the rays of red and white from the bright lights that came from Christ's heart that every that a lot of other people saw children came to the door and said there's a huge light some people thought it was an airplane other sisters saw the light coming from St. Faustina's room. Could you imagine? You're St. Faustina. You're walking down the hallway, going back to your room. You walk in, you close the door, and you turn around, and there's Christ physically in your room. It wasn't just a mental vision. He was physically there. So he told her to have this image painted of him. And, and she did, and, and she didn't like it. She cried. And she said, Lord, nobody can paint you as beautiful as you are. He said, the beauty is not in the color or the brush strokes. The beauty is in the, the grace that you get from the veneration of this image. We don't worship the image. We worship what it represents. Right? All right. Now, paragraph 48 in the diary says this. Jesus says, I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. This is a powerful promise. You know, many promises people have reported to us, their homes have been protected during storms. We had a, one letter from a man in Hurricane Sandy that consecrated his house to divine mercy. All the other houses were destroyed. His was not. We know from World War II, the Warsaw Uprising, that the image was left in particular areas and they were protected. Others were all completely destroyed. It's not a magic wand, it's not a rabbit's foot, but it's entrustment to what it represents, mercy itself, right? That's as important. Now, the Holy Father said, 
that the image, a true image of Christianity of Christ needs to have the Paschal mystery. No other image really captures the Paschal mystery better than the image of divine mercy. Let's look at this, all right? The Paschal mystery, right? Holy Thursday. What did Christ do? He instituted the priesthood. We see Christ dressed here as the high priest, right? On Good Friday, he was crucified. We see the wounds of crucifixion. On Easter Sunday, he resurrected. We see Christ here as resurrected. Then he ascended to the Father, 40 days. And he's raising his right hand in the traditional Jewish form of a blessing that he would have given before rising to the Father. Then after that, on the 50th day, descended the Holy Spirit. We have the blood and the water, the rays of red, the pale and the white coming forth. This is the Holy Spirit. The birth of the church at Pentecost was through the Holy Spirit. So the Paschal mystery is completely here. Let's look at the rest of the image. I mentioned Christ is wearing an alb. He's dressed like a Catholic high priest. What does a Catholic high priest do? He offers sacrifice. Here, Jesus turned around the idea of priest in the Old Testament. It used to be about separation. Get away from the sinner. Now he dines with the sinner. It was about sacrifice of animals. Now it's not a sacrifice of animals. What does Jesus desire? What does God desire? Mercy. Not the sacrifice of animals. In this alb, we see him as the new high priest. He is a victim. He is offering himself, and he is the offer being offered. And this is what we have. Now, the image, we also see the heart. This is very important. This is the sacred heart of Jesus. Now, you've all heard, probably, of the sacred heart devotion, right? So, through St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. By the way, was given to her in 1673, the same year the Marian fathers were, were created, were, were, were first uh, brought together by Blessed Stanislaus Papchinsky. How beautiful, the same year. But you see, in the message and devotion of the Sacred Heart, God tells the world again, I am love. Come to me and make reparation for the sin and the ingratitude of mankind. Did we do that? Not entirely. So God in his infinite wisdom rose up another great saint, Saint Faustina, to then take it to a different level, a new level. You see, in the sacred heart, God says, I am love, come to me and make reparation. In the message of divine mercy, God's love is put into action. So in the sacred heart, we have God as love. In divine mercy, God's love is put into action. That's why the left foot on every image of divine mercy of Christ, he is stepping forward. He's coming to get us. In the sacred heart, he called us to him. Now, at the end of our times, he's coming to us. He said to prepare the world for my second coming. A spark will come from Poland. That spark, John Paul II, St. Faustina, and the message of divine mercy. Now in our own time, at the dawn of the third millennium, we have what has come to be known as the image of the divine mercy, given to a simple Polish sister, Sister Maria Faustina Kowalska, in 1931, an image fastened especially, fashioned especially for the needs of our age by the guiding hand of Jesus himself. What springs to mind first, perhaps, is Easter. It's Easter Sunday night. It's Jesus appearing to his disciples in the upper room. He has just come through the locked doors of the cenacle with his hand raised to bestow his blessing of peace, showing them his wounds, shining with radiant light, overcoming their fears. But this image is also an image of Good Friday. It's Calvary, the time of the piercing of Christ's side by the spear, for out of his heart flow streams of blood and water, a fountain of mercy to wash us of our guilt, and heal us of all our wounds caused by sin. In addition, and in a more subtle way, the image alludes to Holy Thursday, the institution of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, or indeed any Holy Eucharist. This is clear from the garment that Jesus is wearing. He is dressed all in white, in the ankle-length white linen vestment of a high priest of the Jewish temple. Most importantly, this image depicts another time as well. It's today. It's our time. For one thing about this image makes it not quite like an Eastern icon at all. Jesus appears in almost total darkness. 
This is not so much a window into the glories of heaven. There's no gold backdrop here. Rather, it is Jesus himself, the divine mercy incarnate, piercing the darkness and gloom of our terribly dark age with his saving light and with his rays of mercy. In the image of mercy, he's shown walking toward the viewer. That's what St. Faustina saw. With his hand raised in blessing, even before we're ready to ask for a blessing. Here is the Good Shepherd, the risen Lord Jesus Christ, seeking out his lost sheep in the darkness of the night, and the rays of his mercy shining out from his heart, spread out to embrace the whole world. In short, everything about this image speaks of the risen Christ graciously taking the initiative to seek out lost souls in the darkness. As he once said to Sister Faustina, it's perhaps my favorite quote in the whole diary, number 1485, Be not afraid of your Savior, O sinful soul. I make the first move to come to you, for I know that by yourself you're unable to lift yourself to me. How did this image come to be painted? She went to the superior, she says, here, have some canvas, take the paint, do it. But she just couldn't accomplish it herself. We're making one very large assumption there, and that is that everybody believed her, her superiors believed that she was receiving these messages from Oh no, Christ. at that point they didn't. They just, uh, she made a request, they acceded to it. But she was not broadcasting, I had a vision, etc. No one knew she was having visions or anything of the sort. So when did it become apparent to everybody that, in fact, she was having visions? It didn't. There were only a few of her superiors and her, only her spiritual directors who actually knew of her in interior life and uh, of what she was going through with this mission. Her spiritual director, Father Michael Sapochko, commissioned Eugene Kazmorowski, a local artist, to paint the image of Jesus. I've seen many different versions of this image. How happy was she with the last one that was painted before she died? Not happy at all. In fact, she writes in her diary that upon seeing it, she went into the chapel when she got back home from the artist and uh, wept bitterly. And she says, Lord, who's going to paint you as beautiful as you are? I'm sorry. And he said, it's not in the beauty of the color nor in the artist's ability, but in my grace that is the greatness of this image. It's hardly surprising that many artists were invited to paint the image according to Sister's instructions. Artists from Poland, America, Japan, England, and many other parts of the world. Here are a few examples of the various attempts that have been made. But the one that's been distributed more widely than any other is this one by Hyla. Which is in fact the image displayed both in the convent where she died in Krakow and in the church in her home village where she was baptized. As you see, it was before this particular version that our present Pope, formerly Archbishop of Krakow, was photographed in Poland. Tell me what the significance of the rays are. There's one white and one red coming from the breast of Christ. Our Lord explained to Sister Faustina at the request of her confessor that the rays symbolized the blood and water that flowed from his heart when it was pierced on the cross after his death. Many people see the shedding of blood as a sign of death, and yet it is really a sign of life. And therefore, these rays are the source of life, and actually they are also a symbol of the life that comes to us through the Holy Spirit. And where was the image first displayed? It was first publicly offered for veneration in 1935 at the close of the celebrations of the 1900th anniversary of the redemption celebrated at the famous shrine of Our Lady of Mercy in the city of Vilna now in Lithuania and what about the wording at the bottom of this image Jesus said at least these three words have to be there Jesu ufam tobie which in English would be Jesus I trust in you or Jesus I trust you and the word the Lord used to sister Faustina means signed Jesus, I trust you, which gives it a very personal commitment to Jesus, I believe. What are the promises connected with this image? The very first time that the image was revealed to Sister Faustina, the Lord said, I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. 
I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. Sister Faustina's mother superior and her spiritual director, Father Sopachko, had her submitted for tests to evaluate her psychological stability. A psychiatrist, Dr. Mary Marchkiewska, certified that she found no evidence of any abnormal disorders of the nervous system or any mental deviation in Sister Faustina. So, with the approval of her mother superior, Sister Faustina was put in touch with an artist to paint the image that Christ had demanded of her in the vision. When she first saw the original image that was being painted under her direction, she wept in disappointment and complained to Jesus. <laughs> Dear Jesus, who will paint you as beautiful as you really are? The greatness of this image lies not in the beauty of the color nor of the brush, but in my grace. By means of this image I shall grant many graces to souls. It is to be a reminder of the demands of my mercy. I am offering people a vessel with which they are to keep coming for graces to the fountain of mercy. And that vessel is this image with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. To this day, this image continues to be venerated throughout the world. So it is not surprising that artists from around the world have attempted to draw this image. Here are just a few of the many attempts that have been made. The one that has been distributed more widely than any other is this one painted by the Polish artist Hyla. It is also this image that hangs in the convent where Sister Faustina lived in Waginiki and where her mortal remains are now enshrined. The shroud in the connection with the Vilnius image is fascinating. Back in the late 1990s, we had a group that we were working with us Marians called the Life Foundation. And this Life Foundation was doing a talk, a presentation, and they had the image of divine mercy. And I can't go into the whole story now due to time constraints, but they found when they had received this image, they were going to also talk about the Shroud of Turin on that day. And it just so happened that one of the members of the Life Foundation was looking at the two images and they actually put them together, they were just comparing them side by side. He said, wow, there's some similarities in the face, the eyes, the nose, the features of the face. And then somebody from the Life Foundation took the two images, held it up to the light, tradition says it was at 3 o'clock, that I don't know, and put them together and they could see a phenomenal connection between the image on the shroud and the image on the divine mercy. So much so that Father Seraphim took it to Europe and they had it digitally analyzed and he says it's a near perfect match. The man who did the, the, the analyzing said that they mapped like, I don't know, 100 points or whatever, the distance between the eye sockets, the length of the nose, the, everything on the face, and it, it was a match, a complete, complete perfect match. And that's what made this image connection so fascinating. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you will help us in our ministry by accepting St. John Paul II's challenge to be apostles of divine mercy and share the wisdom that you have received from this episode. Please come back and view our next episode and avail yourself of all our support products that will help you to better understand and grow in divine mercy. May the merciful Savior bless you and keep you in his loving hands.